Now, I want to speak to those in the audience who may be truly struggling, right? Feel like you're in a tug of war with your inner critic, with that self-doubt, with that fear, that every day you're running up against it and it's pulling harder. And as much as you try to pull back, it's pulling even harder. And you're feeling stuck, you're feeling anxious around it. And of course, you know there are things you want to be doing in your life that you value. If you listen to this show, you've thought about your core values, you want to do these things. There is an option. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. You guys want to hear a high-value action-taking story from, from a past client? Yes. Uh, so so this, is, this is one of my... It, it comes in two acts. So the first act is um, one client who was in, in the course, trained with me over a couple of weeks and went from this like shy person who wouldn't say anything to this really like confident young man. And, um, and I told him like after the program was over and I saw this young man make like such progress, I said, hey, you know what, let's, let's celebrate over a coffee. Let's meet in the city. Let's grab a coffee. And um, so we're sitting there and he looks over my shoulder, gets up and walks off. I'm like, what's happening here? And I look around and he's like, I see him standing to that, to that uh, beautiful lady and he's talking with her, gives her the phone. She types something into the phone. I very much assume it was the phone number. He takes the phone back, turns around and walks back to me, sits down. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> like what on earth just happened? <laughs> that is like, you know, <laughs> that is like, I, I don't recognize you anymore compared to the first week. So this is, for, this is act one because I told that story to someone who would become another client a year or two later. And he told me when I heard that story, I said to myself, I want to be that person. I want to be the person who can pull off something like that. And then a few weeks later, he sends me a video where he flew to a island and in the Caribbean and he is at the airport, he's super tired. He can barely keep his eyes open and he sees a beautiful lady grabbing her luggage. And he walks over there, he talks to her, and then he sends me a video where those two went on a day trip to an exotic island. And he's like sending me a, a video of, of the island he's in with that lady. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I made it, I did it. You told me that story, I wanted to be that person. Uh, what do you think about the palm trees? And I was like, dude, yeah, I, th that's, that's it. Well, that realization is key for almost all of our clients who've gone through Unstoppable, that I can't wait anymore. Waiting and hoping for the right emotion, for the strike of motivation, for an overwhelming amount of willpower, for the anxiety to go away, that waiting has cost you too much already. And whether you come to us because you are like Joel and have a fear around public speaking at work, or you come to us like Nancy because you're thinking about a career change, but that involves going out on your own and being a coach instead of being part of a team and having all of that self-doubt when you're walking into the boardroom or when you're thinking about starting up your new LinkedIn profile around your coaching company. And within the first couple weeks, realizing where else am I waiting? Man, I'm avoiding signing up for that improv group that I know you guys talk about so much on the podcast. Oh, I've been putting off traveling because, well, I would have to do it alone because I don't have friends who want to travel. So I can't do that. I got to wait for the right moment. How many areas of your life are you waiting in? Because that fear has the driver's seat. That fear has the steering wheel that's taking you on a road that's circling your comfort zone. And you're staring off into the distance, thinking about that exit you'd love to be in the driver's seat for, to take the car to, to make that career change, to kill it on stage, to deliver that pitch in a room full of VCs who are ready to hand you their wallets, right? These fears, we know are holding you back. As we talked about, I've had fear holding me back around getting on stage. 
But those who've come on our show as guests, those who've gone through Unstoppable realize that that fear, it's going to be there. It's what you do in spite of that fear. It's how you move through that fear that you truly become unstoppable. So now we know it's not about waiting for the right emotion. We also want to talk about what you alluded to earlier, Michael, which is many of us think, okay, well, I'm not going to wait. I just have to will the right emotion. I just have to keep telling myself not to feel that way or to feel another way. And one day I'm going to say it for the 20,000th time and it's going to click and I'm going to ride that wave of positive emotion. And the science says that also doesn't work. I mean, we can do an exercise around this if, if you're up for it. So let's do this, right? Let's, let's magically, because that is apparently really, really possible, let's magically conjure up a really positive emotion. So um, AJ, Johnny, you can, you can follow me here and everyone listening. I want you to get really, really, really enthusiastic about becoming a broccoli farmer tomorrow. And for the rest of your life, you're going to, what do you do with broccoli? Do you harvest it? Like, I don't know, does it grow on a tree? I think it grows, see, that's how little I know about it. But you're gonna learn everything about broccoli and you're gonna be like the world's biggest broccoli farmer and your house is going to build of be, being built of broccoli and you're gonna drive a broccoli car and I want you to be really excited about that. And, and you're like, yeah, come on, <laughs> like, yeah, well, why? And then I would say, well, because if you can really get excited about this, I'm gonna give you a hundred million dollars. Now you might get excited, but not about the broccoli. You're getting excited about the cash price. Um, so, so this is of course really, really silly. And I, uh, to those broccoli farmers out there, I applaud you. I love broccoli. Don't get me wrong. But I think the point that I could just make is that none of you were able to magically get excited about something that I just conjured up, even though you know there was a hundred million dollar ta uh, price tag to it. And and this was a really silly exercise. But it's kind of what we're trying to do all the time. Because I gave you like the extreme version of like, I dialed it up to 13, but dial it down to two or three. And what you end up with is, I need to get motivated to apply for that job. I need to get motivated to speak up in front of my boss. Once I feel like it, I'm going to ask him or her out, right? That's what we're constantly trying all the time. And just like my get excited to, you know, be a broccoli farmer for the rest of your life, you couldn't conjure up that excitement. Um, you're probably not able to conjure it up in these other areas as well. And of course, sometimes it might come, it might suddenly be there. And suddenly you do wake up and like, you know what, today is the day I'm going to ask for a race. But really, is that the way you want to live your life? That you, you know, one day wake up and you have the right emotion and finally can, you can move on? I mean, look at, look at those super athletes at the Olympians. It's not like they feel motivated to work out every single day. Like they just do it because it's important. Like this is the kind of person they want to be and whether they wake up motivated or not. Like let me do, let me do what's important here. And of course, if I'm, if I'm motivated, everything is suddenly easier. And you know, I applaud you for, for being motivated and good luck because now it's a little bit easier for today. But don't, like that's not a strategy. That's not how you can play this out. And, and when, when I work with the, uh, with the, with the clients and become unstoppable, they would oftentimes fall back into this trap and I give them a new challenge to do for the week and they'd come back with this realization and they would say, Michael, you know what? I've realized that sometimes I really feel like doing those challenges and sometimes I don't. So how do I get into the mood to do those challenges? And I tell them, I don't want you to be in the mood. That's the point. I want you to do that difficult stuff even though everything in your body your stress, your anxiety, your, your inner critic, your doubt tells you, I don't want to do that. Because if I can train you to do that, to not feel like doing something, to have uh, this, this perfectionistic thoughts about doing something and doing it anyway, the moment this clicks, that like you're, you become unstoppable. And then people do those exercises again and again and again, and they support each other through it. And then week two, three, four, someone comes back and says, you know what just happened, Michael? I was at work or I was at a date and I felt really anxious and my, my perfectionism, my inner critic and everything really spoke up in that situation. But then it reminded me of the exercises that we did and that it feels exactly the same way 
than when you had me out there in public high-fiving strangers. And the exact same thoughts came up and the same emotions came up. And I thought to myself, well, all of the tools that I practiced when I was out there high-fiving strangers and being so afraid of getting rejected and embarrassing myself, all of those tools that I practiced doing that again and again and again, like a karate kid and Miyazaki, right? Paint on, paint on, wax on, wax off. I did this again and again and again. And there I was at the state and my mind kept telling me this. And I was like, no, mind, I've trained this technique so much. I know exactly how to deal with you. And I'm going to say what I'm about to say. Like, I'm going to speak up. I'm going to make a move. And then that, that, that moment when it clicks to them, clicks for them that... Their thoughts and their emotions, they have an influence, but they can't run their life. That moment, they're like, you know, this, this is freedom. This is how I'm going to live my life. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. And that waiting for the high stakes moment for the asking your boss for the raise, for the walking across the street to talk to that beautiful person, to the going in and quitting and starting your own business. Those are such high stakes that it's so difficult and challenging to take the driver's seat in those moments. But as Michael said, if you've been constantly in low stakes situation, training your mind to take the driver's seat, to put those emotions and fears in the passenger seat, in the high stakes situation, it's already routine. It's subconscious for you. It's not conscious effort. It's not you willing it to happen because you've set yourself up in low stakes situations with comfort zone challenges to put yourself outside of your comfort zone, work through the negative thoughts, the self-doubt, the criticism, Realize that on the other side of it is all of these positive emotions. And I want you to think about all of the triumphs in your life up until this point. I'm willing to bet that yes, the stakes were high, but you had some other mechanism putting you in that position, forcing you to take the exam, forcing you to take the job interview, forcing you to ask that person out. And unfortunately, as we become adults, we lose a lot of those situations. We lose a lot of that pressure. We gain freedom to avoid. But when you're in high school, you got to show up for the exam. Mm -hmm. When you're in college, you got to show up. The stakes are high, but there's also other factors putting you in a position where you have no other choice. Unfortunately, as adults, with more choice comes more options for avoidance. So what are you doing to train yourself in low stakes situations? So when the high stakes situations approach, it's not a big deal. It's no sweat. You're excited to take action in those moments. Something to take in consideration. And you mentioned about finding yourself in high stakes situations. When you're younger, you're at school, you're doing things, you're exploring as you get, uh, as you become an adult, you, your life becomes more routine based as you're setting up to gain traction. So you're saying no to a lot of things that previously when you were younger that you would be saying yes to, to find yourself in those situations. I wanna to add to that as well. We have just went through a global pandemic. Do you guys think that within 15 months of saying no to things that you've conditioned yourself to say no to things that you have to break out of? Well, many of us right now are feeling the social anxiety of going and saying yes to now events, to drinks, to dinners. And let's just be honest, all of us, have conditioned ourselves to some degree, no matter what your worldview or how you viewed the pandemic, there are concessions that you made that you had to for, for the safety and sake of family, yourself, your neighbors, uh, for the whole condition. The, the running joke that we've been laughing about is two weeks to flatten a curve. Well, that two weeks has been 15 months of conditioning and, and routines and habits that have been installed for us to work through this traumatic situation. 
And now we're supposed to just pop out and resume life to where it was previously. And it just doesn't work in that manner. We have to begin to start saying yes. So then we can begin to start using our knowledge and our training to persevere and flourish and thrive again. You're at a rebuilding point, everybody. And what better time to reinvent yourself than at the end of a global pandemic? When we all come out of our cocoon, we all come out of our home office and uh, imagine your friends saying like, whoa, that's not how I remember you. Like you're, you're different. What happened? That's, that's the time now. Now, I want to speak to those in the audience who may be truly struggling, right? Feel like you're in a tug of war with your inner critic, with that self-doubt, with that fear that every day you're running up against it and it's pulling harder. And as much as you try to pull back, it's pulling even harder. And you're feeling stuck, you're feeling anxious around it. And of course, you know there are things you wanna be doing in your life that you value. If you listen to this show, you've thought about your core values, you want to do these things. There is an option. And the option is dropping that rope in the tug of war. It's not about pulling back harder and pulling against the emotion and fighting the fear harder and overwhelming it. That's not a winning strategy based on science either. Right, Michael? Yeah. Like so many people think that I got this, like I'm the most confident person on earth and I never feel fear or anxiety. And I tell them like, no, like I, I feel that stuff just like everyone else does out there, but I don't fight with it. Like that's the big thing that has changed and that a lot of people that have really developed their confidence, like they say exactly the same thing. It's not that I don't feel anxiety, but it's not like, oh, oh no, I feel anxiety. I need to fight it. It's like, oh, anxiety, my old buddy. Like, I know you, like you've been on the ride with me whenever I do something that's important. Like you're sitting next to me. Uh, you know, this is a good indicator that I'm obviously doing something that's important right now. So thank you for being there. Watch me do this. Like, watch me, watch me do this. But what most people will do is they will be in that tug of war and they'll try to beat that anxiety sitting next to them because once it's gone, everything is easy. But guess what? Like, it's never going to go. Like one, one person comes, comes to mind, Joel, and he came into the program because he had one very specific problem. And that is that he had a leading position at work and he had to present in front of people and even like sometimes in front of like people really high up in the, in the corporate ladder and he would freak out. He'd freeze, he'd be in front of everyone and just not be able to say anything. And that's what he wanted to work on. So he got, he got the tools, we practiced the tools. And at the end of the course, um, he told me like, not only did I figure this one out and I'm presenting at work now, what was even more amazing is that all the other opportunities this opened up in my life because suddenly I'm present when I'm with my family. I'm a better partner, I'm a better parent, I'm a better child to my parents. And all of those things, I'm still using the same tools you taught me to speak in front of an audience the exact same tools that I've practiced again and again and again, and they've opened up all of these other doors in my life that I've been locked before. And that is the shift of moving those fears and securities and self-doubt from the driver's seat to the passenger seat. Joel didn't realize fears, insecurities, and self-doubt were on cruise control in these other areas of his life because things are going well. He has a family, he has a career, he has things in his life that seemingly from the outside, yeah, they're exactly what I wanted. But when he realized that that self-doubt and fear might be in the driver's seat in these other areas, will you look to move it to the passenger seat in areas that you hadn't even considered? And that's what we mean by becoming unstoppable. It's not once, it's not do this once. It's think about all the areas in your life that you might encounter a roadblock on your journey to reach your full potential. There are going to be obstacles. There are going to be three car pileups. There are going to be construction barrels that you have to avoid. And moving to the driver's seat of life creates the freedom to get on stage, change your career, get more dates, move to a new city, travel alone, 
These are all of the results we've seen from those attendees in Unstoppable, understanding that fear doesn't have to hold you back. And confidence is not the end goal. Freedom is the end goal. Confidence is how we get there. So ask yourself, if I was confident, 100% confident, not a single doubt or fear, what would I do today?